Big Hero 6 Trick or Treat Everybody smile and say spooky! Hero and his friends posted as Aunt Cass took a picture. They were all celebrating Halloween together at the cafe. Aunt Cass smiled. You all look great, she said. Thanks again for helping with all the trick-or-treaters tonight. Fred shrugged. No problem, Aunt Cass, he said. Then he turned to Hyro. What about Baymax? Why isn't he dressed up tonight? Baymax doesn't know much about Halloween, Hiro said. But he's all white. Maybe he could be a ghost? Baymax quickly looked up what a ghost was. I am a robot, he said. I cannot be a ghost. Just then, the bell on the cafe door jingled. Two children stepped inside, dressed up for Halloween. Baymax looked at one of the trick-or-treaters. She was completely covered in bandages. Your bandages indicate that you are injured, Baymax said. I am here to help. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate your pain? The little girl giggled. I'm not hurt, she said. This is my costume. I'm a mummy. Baymax scanned the girl with his sensors. I will scan you for injuries now. Scan complete. No injuries, injuries detected, he reported. The girl giggled again. Trick or treat, she exclaimed. Baymax paused and tipped his head to the side. What is a trick or treat? he asked at last. Hero slapped his hand on his forehead. I guess I should have told you more about Halloween, Baymax. Halloween is a holiday when kids walk door to door wearing costumes and say, Trick or treat! It's our job to give them a treat. Hero picked up a big bucket of candy and gave some to the trick-or-treaters. Thank you, they said as they left the cafe. Baymax looked at the bucket of candy. Eating candy can lead to tooth decay, high blood pressure and other health problems, he said. It is not good for the health and well-being of a patient. Well, yeah, Hero said. But it's Halloween. Eating candy is a tradition. Baymax moved toward the kitchen. I will find a better treat, he said. The bell on the door of the cafe jingled again. And another group of costume kids came in. Trick or treat, they yelled. Just then Baymax reappeared. I will give you a treat, he said. Baymax placed a stalk of broccoli into each trick-or-treater's bag. Broccoli is high in fiber and contains 17 important vitamins and minerals. Yuck, one of the kids said. He looked at Hyro. Is this a trick, mister? he asked. Hyro quickly put candy into their bags. Don't mind him, he said. Baymax can't help himself. He's a healthcare robot. Here's some candy. Happy Halloween! Satisfied, the kids ran off. Candy is not a healthy treat, Baymax told Hero. Oh, Baymax, Hero said. A little candy is okay once in a while. It is important to maintain a balanced diet and active lifestyle, Baymax said. Halloween is supposed to be fun, Baymax, Honey Lemon chimed in. It wouldn't be the same without candy. That gave Hero an idea. Come on, Baymax, he said. Let's go trick-or-treating. Then you can see what we mean. 
Soon, Euro and Baymax were walking down the street. When you trick or treat, you walk from house to house, Euro explained. Walking is healthy, right? Correct, Baymax replied. However, more pedestrian accidents happen at night than during the day. Euro turned on the flashlight on his phone. We'll be safe, Baymax. I promise, he said. The two climbed up the steps of a house decorated for Halloween. Hero rang the bell. Here we go, he told Baymax. Soon a woman answered the door. Trick or treat, Hero said. Yes, trick or treat, Baymax added. The woman looked at Baymax. Well, isn't that a fancy ghost costume you've got there, she said. Then she put candy in their treat bags. Here you go. Wasn't that fun, Baymax? Hero asked as they walked back down the stairs. Baymax scanned Hero. Your neurotransmitter levels are elevated. That indicates that you are happy. All that matters to me is the well-being of my patient. Hero sighed. <sighs> Whatever you say, ba Baymax, I guess you'll never understand how cool Halloween is. Would it make you happy if I understood? Baymax asked. Your well-being is important to me. Don't worry about it, Baymax, Euro said. Just then, a boy with a red nose walked past them. Baymax stopped the boy. Your red nose indicates that you have a cold or may be suffering from allergies, Baymax said. Allow me to scan you for injuries. He's not sick, Baymax. That's just part of his costume, Hero explained. Baymax scanned the boy. You are correct. There is no indication of a cold or an allergy. He is healthy. Yeah, I feel great, the boy said. It's Halloween. This gave Hero another idea. Baymax, he said. Is he just healthy or is he happy too? Baymax scanned the boy again. His endorphin levels and neurotransmitters indicate that he is experiencing happiness, he reported. Well... Happiness is important, right? Hero asked. Correct, Baymax replied. Happiness can strengthen your immune system. So now do you see that Halloween's not so bad? Hero asked. I understand, Baymax said. Halloween elevates people's emotional state. That is healthy. Hero Hugged Baymax. I knew you'd figure it out, he said. And that makes me happy. Back at the cafe, Hero and Baymax greeted more trick-or-treaters. I'll let you handle this one, buddy, Hero said. Baymax greeted each one of them with a wave. Hello, hello, hello. He gave each trick-or-treater one piece of candy. Then, before they had the chance to leave, he added some broccoli to their baskets too. Hero groaned. Baymax, I thought we agreed not to give out broccoli on Halloween. Baymax replied. This treat is good for digestion. And that one elevates the emotional state of these patients. Hero shook his head. It seemed there were some battles he just couldn't win. Sweet and spooky Halloween. A princess loves to celebrate Halloween. It's the perfect time of year to plan a sweet and spooky party with friends. Cinderella carves big orange pumpkins. Gus and Jacques 
love to help. When Cinderella finishes carving, she turns the pumpkins into glowing jack-o'-lanterns. Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether love using magic to create colorful costumes for Princess Aurora. Ariel uses seashells and seaweed to make silly masks for the Halloween festival under the sea. Arr! Flounder is a pirate. Belle bakes sweet Halloween treats for the beast. Pumpkin pie is his favorite. Cinderella hands out candy to all the trick-or-treaters who come to the castle. Gus likes to fill a little candy bag of his own. The dwarves love bobbing for apples. Dopey is the best. He doesn't have a beard to get in the way. Halloween is a time for tricks. In their silly and creepy costumes, Ariel and Flounder surprise Sebastian and say, Boo! It is also a time for treats. Snow White stuffs bags of sweets for all the dwarfs. Halloween can also be a spooky time, especially in the Beast's castle. Belle tells scary Halloween stories that make even the beast tremble with fright. With fish and merfolk wearing creepy costumes, even the sea can seem very spooky on Halloween. Flandre is scared to swim through the dark caves and grotes. But Halloween is also a time for fun. With a little magic, Cinderella and the prince ride in a carriage that really is a giant pumpkin. Costumes and carvings, candy and cobwebs, tricks and treats. Halloween is surely the sweetest and spookiest time of all. What will you be for Halloween? A princess? Spot's Halloween. Spot and his friends are very excited. It's time to dress up for Halloween, Spot. Helen dresses as a fairy. Tom dresses as a pirate. Steve dresses as a clown. What does Spot want to be? Hmm. A cowboy? A super pub? A bunny? No, Spot wants to be a wizard. Don't forget your broom, Spot. Thanks, Mom. Off we go to trick or treat. Tricks and treats. April opened her apartment door, letting in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Boo wah! yelled Raphael, surprised at what he saw in the doorway. Jeepers creepers! Donatello exclaimed, with an emphasis on creepers. Happy Halloween! greeted April. Here you go, boys, she said handing them each a decorated bag. Wow, great costumes you two, said Leonardo, impressed. Yeah, but how come Casey's not wearing any monster makeup, joked Raphael. Her, not funny, 
little turtle, replied Casey Jones. He was trying to both look and speak like a monster. I can't believe you guys have never been trick-or-treating before, said April. Master Splinter never wanted us to leave the sewers when we were little, Leonardo replied. Right, but tonight we convinced him that looking like Ninja Turtles would be the perfect disguise on Halloween, added Donatello. Everyone will think that we're wearing costumes. The turtles knocked on their first door of the night. You boys look so cute, said an old woman as she opened the door and handed out chocolate bars. Cute? Really? asked Raphael. His face fell. Well, no, not really, said the woman, noticing his disappointment. You really look quite scary. Much better, replied Raphael, beaming. The turtles found a store that was giving out candy. Bring it on, dudes, said Michelangelo, stuffing both his bag and his mouth with candy. My stomach thinks this is the best holiday ever invented, said Michelangelo between mouthfuls of candy. Yep, Halloween good, agreed Casey, still trying to sound like a monster. As they walked down the street, the turtles met some children who were upset. What's wrong, little dudes? asked Leonardo. Some bullies stole our candy, said a little girl dressed as a vampire. What? Where are they? asked Raphael, outraged. They went dead away, I reckon, drawled the boy dressed up as a cowboy, pointing. Farther down the street, a half dozen purple dragons congratulated themselves. Just like stealing candy from a baby, said one purple dragon. It was stealing candy from a baby, laughed another purple dragon. I know of the perfect abandoned building right around the corner where we can chill out and look at our loot, said the purple dragon leader. They're heading into the old Poe building, said April. It's supposed to be haunted. That gives me an idea, Leonardo said. We could haunt the purple dragons and scare them into giving up the stolen candy. Everyone agreed and set off to the Poe building. The turtles approached the house and went into ninja mode. Be like shadows, my brothers whispered Leonardo with the softness of a breeze. Ahem, <clears throat> April said, clearing her throat. Right, my brothers and sister, corrected Leonardo. A short while later, inside the abandoned building, the purple dragons counted out their stolen candy. Wow, look at all we got, said one of them. And for free, said another. Now who says that crime doesn't pay? Ha 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 ha. Hey, where are you guys going? Asked the purple dragon leader. Exploring, answered the purple dragon, as he made his way out of the big central room. Maybe there's other loot to be stolen from this fancy joint. This place isn't so scary, the dragon said out loud. I don't know why people think this place is haunted. I do, said a voice from the darkness in front of him. Suddenly a face appeared. Because it is haunted, said the face, scaring the dragon who stood frozen with fear. Meanwhile, one of the purple dragons was poking around in the kitchen. There's the pantry, he said. Maybe there's something to chow on besides candy. 
he wasn't smart enough to remember that the house had long been abandoned. Here's something to chow on, said Donatello in his best scary voice, leaping out from the pantry shadows. The purple dragon fainted from fright. Another one of the dragons found a bathroom. What's that? he asked, frightened by a dark shape behind the shower curtain. I am your worst nightmare, growled April. The purple dragon screamed. The dragon scream tore through the house. Do you hear something strange? asked the purple dragon leader. Never mind that, said one of the other dragons. What's that other sound? Like heavy footsteps coming this way. I think this place is really haunted. Casey Jones lumbered toward the group of dragons. <laughs> moaned Casey in his deepest monster voice. Boo! yelled Leonardo from behind the sheet as he and Raphael leaped from the darkness. Boo! added Raphael. The three purple dragons screamed in unison as they scrambled to get away. Ah! All six of the purple dragons continued to scream as they dropped their candy and ran out of the building. Bad guys gone, observed Casey. Yes, they are, agreed April. We not only gave the purple dragons a good fright, but we also managed to get the kids' candy back. Everything except for what they ate, said Michelangelo, fighting the urge to eat the fast pile of candy before him. The turtles, April and Casey, returned the stolen candy to its rightful owners. Wow, you got our candy back, exclaimed the vampire girl. Thanks, partners, said the cowboy. We did a very good deed tonight, observed Donatello. We sure did, said Casey, tired of talking like a monster. Maybe that's why they say, Happy Halloween, joked Michelangelo. Everyone smiled in agreement. It was a very happy Halloween.